Srimati Rajashri Birla, patron of the institute, Srimati Jayashri Mohta, the chairperson, Sri Kumaramangalam Birla and other members of the Birla family in the audience, Dr. Jayanta Shen Gupta, Sri Johnny M. L. Srimati Shikha Roy, distinguished citizens of Calcutta, fellow art lovers, respected members of the audience, the staff and uh, karmacharis of the Birla Academy, the representatives of the press and electronic media, and friends. Before proceeding, I would like to pay homage to two remarkable women. The first is Shimati Sarla Birla, whom I met first over half a century ago, and who, along with B.K. Babu, founded this great institution. She was a woman of great intelligence and uh, understanding. And she was the driving force behind many good projects, including the setting up of the Birla Academy. She was also involved in the interfaith movement. And in fact, it was she who got me involved in that. And for the last four or five decades, I have been working in that movement which seeks to bring together people of different religious uh, communities in a harmonious dialogue. So Sarlaji was a very powerful presence here. I like to pay my homage to her and say that we do respect the work that she has done, which will always be a landmark in the cultural life of Calcutta. Secondly, <clears throat> by an interesting coincidence, Today happens to be the birth anniversary of my late wife who accompanied me when I came here 50 years ago to inaugurate this exhibition. We were married when we were very young, both of us. I must say we probably broke some laws or they were not in, 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 uh, in, uh, in action at that time. And uh, we grew up together. And she was my constant companion and passed away in the 60th year of our marriage. Her name was Yasho Rajya Lakshmi. And I always used to say, whenever she was there, marrying her, I got Yash, I got Rajya, and I got Lakshmi. So, I got the three of them, and the three of them, I am very proud of her name today. She was also here. I must say it's a rare privilege to have inaugurated an institution and then to be present as chief guest on its golden jubilee. I think this must, be, must go into the Guinness Book of Records somewhere. And uh, it happened to me twice actually in the course of the last year. The Banaras Hindu University, when it celebrated its Gold, is Golden Jubilee in 1966. I happened to be Chancellor of the University at that time. And I presided over the Golden Jubilee Convocation. And believe it or not, last year was its centenary. And once again, I happened to be Chancellor of the University. So I presided over the, the centenary convocation of the, of the University. So this is a rare blessing. I, I thank Lord Shiva and all, all, all the divine forces for having given me this very unique opportunity. Uh, over 50 years, this Birla Academy has flourished and played a very significant role in the, in the life of, of this great cultural center, Calcutta. Um, I recall I used to come here even before this, Lady Ranu Mukherjee had an Academy of Indian Art, I think. And I used to come every year for their exhibition she used to have. And then the Birla Academy came into the picture. And I must say, I learned a great deal from your talk and from the film. And I was very impressed to realize the extent and depth of the activities of this uh, institute and the richness of your, uh, of your collection in so many different genres. I'm sure this must be one of the most significant private collections, not only in India, but in the whole of Asia. And uh, I would like to congratulate 
the Birla family and congratulate you, Jayashiji, particularly having taken over from your parents the responsibility of running this institution. Uh, I would like to congratulate you for the work that you are doing. Um, I have also visited the contemporary exhibition which uh, Johnny ML has uh, curated. Uh, it's very impressive. It uh, highlights a number of extremely creative uh, uh, artists, some of whom I have known, some of whom are new to me. Uh, I must, however, even at the risk of, uh, of uh, seeing some, some dissent, I must lament that some genres of art seem to be fading away. What is, what we, what is known now as Indian style of art. It is very beautiful. I remember I used to buy things by, there was a man called Tribhanga Roy who used to paint Bagala Mukhi. I bought two or three of his paintings. Many very, very beautiful paintings which uh, I bought a painting by one Ratan Acharya a few years ago in Delhi. Very lovely paintings. Now that genre has disappeared now. Uh, you know, I think that's a pity because the so-called Indian style of art, I mean, all this art is Indian, but that particular style, uh, which was so prevalent at one time, and all the, our great traditions of the Kangra art and the Pahadi art and the Bengali art and all, and now the whole thing has been totally steamrolled by modern art. I have, I have great respect for modern art. I have traveled around the world. I have seen the great exhibitions. I have seen the, the Prada. I have seen the... The, the Victoria and Albert Museum and, and the, Her the Hermitage and all over the world, I'm profoundly impressed. But it doesn't mean that only one form of art should dominate everything. Indian form of art has disappeared. Landscape painting, which is a very beautiful form. Even if you go to Europe today, you can see beautiful landscapes are being painted and in museums. That has disappeared now. Nobody seems to want to paint a landscape. And Portraiture. Portraiture is very important. Portrait painting, some of the greatest paintings in the world are portraits of people. So Indian form of art, landscape art and portraiture have all seemed to have disappeared and have all been overtaken by this powerful modern art. So without in any way trying to denigrate the importance of modern art, I would respectfully suggest that the Birla Academy and the Birlas have always been very deeply involved in the Indian cultural tradition. They should try and see whether, along with so many other things, you cannot help to revive some of these very beautiful forms of art. Maybe I'm old-fashioned, I don't know. But I love all forms of art. And if somebody in the audience likes it, I hope you'll applaud that idea. Let me say that I have always been very impressed by the cultural uh, tradition of Bengal. I have some kind of a spiritual link with Bengal, I think. I don't know what it is, but I have been deeply impressed by, the, by Bengal's contribution to Indian culture in every sphere, not only in art, in every sphere. And I, I always uh, I have worked out a sort of a triveni of, uh, of uh, contributions made by Bengal. I really didn't tell you this, but I'm really telling it more to myself. For example, literature. You have Bankim Chandra who gave us the immortal Anandamat and the song Bande Mataram, which became a rallying cry for our freedom struggle. You have Sharad Chandra, which is Devadas and all the social uh, novels. And you have, of course, Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore. You have that Triveni there, Bankim, you have Sharad, you have Gurudev who became world famous. In science, you have J.C. Bose, who is in a way the father of Indian science. You have Satendra Bose, of the Boson fame, the Boson is named after him. You have Meghnath Saha, with his theorems which made such a tremendous impact on modern science. So whether it is literature, whether it is science, whether it is social reform, with Raja Ram Mohan Roy, with Keshav, Chandra Sen, Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar, people who led the Indian Renaissance, who led the social reform movements that ultimately resulted in the national movement and resulted in our freedom. 
came from Bengal. You have in political life, Bipin Chandrapal, Chitaranjan Siyar Das, Desh Bandhu, and Netaji Subhash Bhavas. So in political life also, you have had outstanding leaders have been produced. In films, you have Satyajit Ray, you have Murnal Sen, and you have Bimal Roy with his glorious films. There again, Bengal has excelled. And above all, in the field of the spirit, you have the remarkable trinity of Sri Ramakrishna, Swami Vivekananda, and Sri Aurobindo. I think it is astounding that one state should have produced these sort of Trivenis in almost every field of human endeavor. I cannot think of any parallel apart from Greece, ancient Greece, where so much talent flowered in so many different fields within about half a century. So I pay my homage to Bengal and the Bengali tradition. And Sri Aurobindo is, as you know, uh, Jayashir Ji insists that I speak for exactly 30 minutes. So I'm on, 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 on record, you know, I'm a little, little uh, this thing about that. But it's a long time, it's about 70 years since anybody has actually given me a timeline. But it's good for me, it's good discipline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recite a poem by Sri Aurobindo. Would you like to hear a poem by Sri Aurobindo? It's called Who? In the blue of the sky, in the green of the forest, whose is the hand that has painted the glow? When the winds were asleep in the womb of the ether, who was it roused them and bade them to blow? He's lost in the heart, in the cavern of nature. He's found in the brain where he builds up the thought. In the pattern and bloom of the flowers he is woven. In the luminous net of the stars he is caught. In the strength of a man, in the beauty of woman, in the laugh of a boy, in the blush of a girl, the hand that sent Jupiter spinning through heaven spends all its cunning to fashion a curl. These are his works and his ways and his shadows. But where is he then? By what name is he known? Is he Brahma or Vishnu, a man or a woman? Body or bodiless, twin or alone? We have love for a boy who is dark and resplendent. A woman is lord of us, naked and fierce. We've seen him amuse on the snows of the mountain. We watched him at work in the heart of the spheres. We will tell the whole world of his ways and his cunning. He has rapture of torture and passion and pain. He delights in our sorrow and drives us to weeping, then lures with his joy and his beauty again. All music is only the sound of his laughter. All beauty, the smile of his passionate bliss. Our lives are his heartbeats. Our rapture, the bridal of Radha and Krishna. Our love is their kiss. He is strength that is loud in the blare of the trumpets. And he rides in the car and he strikes in the spears. He slays without stint and is full of compassion. He wars for the world in his ultimate years. In the sweep of the worlds, in the surge of the ages, ineffable, mighty, majestic and pure, beyond the last pinnacle seized by the thinker, he is thrown in his seats that forever endure. The master of man and his infinite lover is close to our hearts had we vision to see. We are blind with our pride and the pomp of our passions. We are bound in our thoughts where we hold ourselves free. It is he in the sun who is ageless and deathless. And into the midnight his shadow is thrown. When darkness was blind and engulfed within darkness, he was seated within it, immense and alone. What a beautiful poem. नहीं श्री और बिंदु श्री और बिंदु की कब कविता है मैं भी लिखता हूँ लेकिन मैं इस किस्म की नहीं लिखता नहीं नहीं अभी बहुत बोलना है जी मैंने अभी तो पांच ही मिनट हुए ये बीच में मैं बोल रहा हूँ थोड़ा सा और I'm bringing in some lighter relief मेरी कविता की बात की है ना मैं अपनी कविता भी सुना देता हूँ एक चलिए एक मैं जब भगवान शंकर का भक्त हूँ तो मैंने एक छोटी सी कविता लिखी है जिसका अनुमान है अनुरोध हे शिव शंकर महादेव मारकंडे के रक्षक त्रिपुरासुर के भक्षक मेरे साथ क्या व्यवहार करोगे हे शिव शंकर महादेव मारकंडे के रक्षक त्रिपुरासुर के भक्षक मेरे साथ क्या व्यवहार करोगे यदि भस्म करने का ही निर्णय हो तो भी मुझे कोई आपत्ति नहीं यदि भस्म करने का ही निर्णय हो तो भी मुझे कोई आपत्ति नहीं 
हाँ एक अनुरोध अवश्य है उसके बाद मेरी भस्म को अपने शरीर पे लगा लेना सो आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट इंडियन कल्चर एंड ऑफ बेंगाल यूनिक यूनिक कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन टू इंडियन कल्चर एंड आवर कल्चर इज यूनिक इन टू डायमेंशन वन इज इट्स एंटीक्विटी इट गोज बैक टू द वेरी टू वेरी डोन ऑफ आवर ऑफ आवर सिविलाइजेशन right right from the very early the ajanta lora caves and the and the great uh, elephanta caves and so on and all the way down unbroken despite all the ups and downs and the invasions and the disasters that we faced our cultural tradition remained strong and intact and its extraordinary diversity every state every region has produced its own cultural artifacts whether it is in music whether it is in food whether it is in cuisine whether it is in dress whether it is uh, in language uh, in literature in every sphere we have this tremendously rich diversity uh, of indian culture and the foundations perhaps were laid by bharata's natya shastra and the bhash on that natya shastra by the great kashmiri savant acharya abhinav gupta they made the foundation about theoretical foundation of indian uh, artistic culture the rasa theory and the fact that uh, uh, in fact it is looked upon bharatanatya shastra was looked upon as the fifth veda because it is so important for us to have art in our lives and there is a famous saying sahitya sangeet kala vihina sakshat pashu puch vishan vihina ki any person a human being who is totally devoid of of art is like virtually like an animal but without horns and a tail uh, so the the whole theory of satyam shivam sundaram something should be true it should be auspicious and it should be beautiful i think that does remain modern art i do not know how far it fulfills all three it's certainly true uh, some of it is beautiful some of it is not but then nowadays beauty is out of fashion we actually had a seminar in delhi is beauty still necessary in art i thought that was rather odd you know i thought art was all about creating beauty but apparently beauty is now become old fashioned i still love beauty anything that is beautiful i was telling uh, kumar mangalam coming here and i was telling jayshri seeing that glorious nataraja नित्यावसाने नटराज रायो ननाद धक्काम नव पंचवारम उद्धर तो कामान सनकादि सिद्धान ये तत्विमर्शे शिव सूत्र जाल इट वॉज वर्थ वाइल कमिंग ऑल द वे फ्रॉम डेली जस्ट टू सी दैट ब्यूटिफुल ऑब्जेक्ट सो टू मी अ वर्क ऑफ आर्ट दैट इज नॉट ब्यूटिफुल इट मे बी वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट वेरी पावरफुल वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट द ब्यूटी इज देयर एंड इट इज सेट दैट ब्यूटी लाइज इन द आई ऑफ द बिहोल्डर so it varies i am not laying down any standards of beauty i am simply expressing a personal opinion that to my mind art music sculpture dance creates beauty and the creation of beauty i think is one of the great gifts of the human race perhaps one of the few things that differentiates us from other species on the planet is the capacity to create and to appreciate beauty the appreciation of beauty is also important in the famous uh, sher you have heard hazaron saal nargis apni benuri pe roti hai badi mushkil se hota hai chaman mein deeda var paida the the nargis the narcissus laments its darkness and lack of appreciation it is very very rarely the somebody is born who can appreciate it badi mushkil se hota hai chaman mein deeda var paida so we are rasikas we are lovers of beauty and i think it would be a sad day if beauty disappears from art that's my